Hello chess fans, this is Rick from chess to impress with coverage of round 4 of the 2018 Tata Steel Tournament. We'll look at the results of round 4 and the standings at the end of the video, but let's first look at the game between two Russian giants. Vladimir Kramnik against Peter Svitler. Kramnik was white, Svitler was black. Kramnik is the 14th world champion. He was the one that beat Garry Kasparov in the year 2000 and then he successfully defended his, his title twice against Peter Leko from Hungary in 2004 and against Veselin Topalov from Bulgaria in 2006. Then he lost his title the year after to Vishwanathan Anand. Peter Svitler is the 8th time Russian champion, quite amazing. He also was a world championship candidate himself a few times and he was Vladimir Kramnik second in some of his world championship matches. They are very good friends. Kramnik has a great score with White against Fiedler. It's eight wins to one with seven draws before this game of today, which was played on the 16th of January 2018. Let's have a look at what happened this time. Kramnik opens knight f3, knight f6 from Svitler, g3, d5, bishop g2, g6, Kramnik castled, bishop g7, d4, Svitler castled, he likes the Grunfeld Indian defense very much and he has a Grunfeld set up now. c4, it's called the Neo Grunfeld Indian opening and Svitler played c6 and this position can also then arise from the Slav defense. Kramnik had his position as well in this tournament against Wei Yi from China who played d takes c4 in this position instead of c6. But c6 was played by Svitler. Here c takes d5 is the main move in the theory of this variation but Kramnik played knight e5. Bishop e6 from Svitler. Black's idea is to take on c4. But Kramnik takes on d5. Svitler took back with the bishop. And here Kramnik played knight c3 afterwards. He called this a new idea in this opening. In the live broadcast, the grandmasters were quite surprised with knight c3 because it allows black to swap the bishops, which he indeed did. They thought that instead of knight c3, white could play the knight back to f3 to avoid the bishop being swapped, or maybe even something like f3 and then e4, getting a very strong center and keeping the two bishops. Kramnik chose for knight c3. Svitler took on g2, king takes back, and knight bd7 developing. Queen b3 from Kramnik, eyeing up the b7 pawn, and Svitler protects it with queen b6. And these two queens eyeing each other up on b3 and b6, we see that often in quite a few opening systems. And the question is always, who is going to take, who wants to take? Does white want to take on b6 or does black want to take on b3? Well, Kramnik did not want to take. He played rook d1 and Svitler did want to take. He took on b3 and Kramnik took back. This is an interesting moment. Kramnik in his interview afterwards called this a very unpleasant endgame for black. And in the live broadcast, the grandmasters mentioned that the rook on a1 can become very strong, but little did they know how strong that rook would become. It was in fact international master Stefan Kuipers who said that he has explained to amateur players about a million times that the isolated doubled pawns that white has here on b2 and b3 are in fact not a problem for white, unless black can get a knight on b4, then it can be a bit of a problem. But otherwise those pawns are fine. White has developed his rook for free. He has now an open file for the rook and he has eternal pressure against a7. Even if black plays a6 to neutralize that rook on a1, then 
White can play against the black pawns with maneuvers like knight e4, knight c5, or knight b6 if that move is possible, or otherwise knight c4, knight a5, and this can be quite promising for white. Another point is that, yes, these pawns on b2, let me get rid of all those knight arrows. These pawns on b2 and b3 are weak in theory, but as a good friend of mine, an international master as well, explained, pawns, weak pawns are only weak if the opponents can get at them, and it's very difficult for black to get at these b2 and b3 pawns for the moment. So quite instructive, a takes b3 is not a problem for white. Rook fc8 was played by Svitler. Kramnik played f4, c5, bishop e3, c takes, Kramnik took with the rook, knight was swapped, f takes, and now white has another doubled pawn, so he has d two doubled pawns in a position, but he has very active pieces, he's slightly better. Knight e8 from Svitler, and rook d7. And yes, white's pawn structure is not pretty, to say the least, but he has a lot of activities for his pieces, and black's pieces are quite passive. White is a rook on the seventh rank, so Sweetler is protecting the seventh rank with his rook. And it looks like he has a good position. It looks very solid. Pawn e5 is also a weakness, but here comes a hammer blow from white. Actually, before I show you that hammer blow, instead of rook c7, Kramnik after the game thought that black should have played bishop takes e5. That's his best try, but still not easy to play for black. And in fact, white has now the option to take three different pawns. He can take on a7, he can take on b7, and he can take on e7. But after rook c7, the move from the game, lightning struck in broad daylight. Kramnik's rook is hanging on d7, but he took with his other rook on a7. What is this? It turned out that it's a very good move, it's the best move in the position, and it also turns out that Svitler had not missed it, but he had missed a variation. You cannot take that rook that is hanging, because then rook takes a8, attacking the knight, and then king f8, and this pin is very unpleasant for black. So it's not really a viable option to play like this. So back to rook takes a7. What Svitler had missed is that if he takes the rook on a7, then rook d8 is the move, and if you now save your rook from a7, just because it's a nice variation, let's have a look at it. If you play rook a6 to save that rook, then there's a nice checkmate. Rook takes e8 check, bishop f8 only move, and bishop h6, and there's nothing that black can do against rook takes f8 checkmate. A classical checkmate this is. So let's go back. If after rook takes a7, Sweetler takes on a7, rook d8, and now not rook a6, but king f8 to protect the knight, then we have bishop takes a7, bishop takes e5, bishop b8 with a skewer, but you can still protect your bishop with rook c5, but then there is b4, and this is the variation that Sweetler had missed. The rook can now no longer keep defending the bishop. These squares are all taken by white's pieces. The computer still found, finds a crazy move. Bishop c7, counter-attacking the rook on d8. But then rook c8, this bishop is now attacked twice and defended twice. It's still okay, and you can play rook c4 to take your rook out of the attack. But a knight d5 attacks this bishop a third time, and white will win material. So after rook takes a7, the only other option left was rook b8, which is what Svitler played. And here in the studio, the grandmasters were looking at e6, giving up the e5 pawn, which it looks like you're going to lose anyway. And then f takes e6, and black has shattered pawns there. But Kramnik did not want to part with his e5 pawn, he played rook d5, protecting that pawn. 
b6 from Sweetler. Knight b5 attacking the rook. A pair of rooks was traded. And king f8. Rook d7 from Kramnik because black can now not take on e5 because of knight c6 with a nice fork. Winning material. After rook d7, Siedler played rook a8 and Kramnik played bishop d4. A nice move to increase the pressure, protect the e5 pawn, and here Peter Sweetler resigned. He wanted to end the suffering. By the way, Sweetler is known to resign quite early. Actually, once in a drawn bishop endi ending against Kramnik in this Tata Steel tournament a number of years ago, Sweetler resigned. It was a drawn position, and when he resigned, Kramnik actually was confused for a moment and thought, Did I offer a draw? And in the analysis, they found that indeed Sweetler had resigned in a drawn position. But in this case, White is totally winning. As Gradmaster van Kampen pointed out, he pointed out the plan for white b4, b5, and then knight c6. That's an option. The engine here, after bishop d4, gives f6 as a possible move. Another move the engine should suggest is actually bishop h8. And if the engine comes up with those type of moves, then you know black is in big trouble. All white's pieces are better than black's, and black cannot activate them. And also white has an extra pawn. As I said, f6 is a move from the engine and then he wants white to play e6 and then f5 to at least activate one piece. Bishop takes b6, bishop takes b2 and then white can start pushing his b-pawn. His rook and knight are still very very passive and white has a winning position. With Kramnik's technique this is an easy win for white. So with his win Kramnik has made it 9 wins to 1 with the white pieces against his great friend and compatriot Peter Sviedler. Kramnik has an interesting tournament. So far he only played one draw in four games, two wins and one loss. And Sviedler played three draws and this is his first loss. The results of round 4. Einish Giri, the tournament leader, played a draw against Magnus Carlsen. Carlsen played the French defence. Hojefan lost her third game, this time against Russian Grandmaster Matlakov. Kramnik Fiedler we saw. Adiban played a draw against Anand, that was an all-India clash. Karyakin, a draw against Mamedyarov. Weyi beat Jones and the all-American clash Karurana and so also ended in a draw. The standings after four rounds, Giri and Anand still on top with plus two, Carlsen, Mamadjarov and Kramnik half a point behind. Jones, Kayakin, So, Matlakov and Weiyi are five players on 50%. Siedler and Karana are a minus one. Adiban has one point and poor Hoyefan only has been able to make one draw. Round five will be played on Wednesday the 17th of January. They will go on tour. They'll leave Wijkansee, the coastal town, and they go to the town of Hilversum. Just over an hour drive from Wijkansee. I will be here after the round to tell you what happens. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment. And if you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media. You also may want to check out my Chess to Progress channel. The link is in the description box. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.